So, you know, I, uh, back in, in 2017, had the opportunity to meet Ray Two Hogs Watson, and, you know, if there's not a, a pattern, hopefully you're recognizing it, at least that there is, when I don't understand something and I feel like I'm not equipped to even engage a challenge, especially if it's a challenge in our community that has a history of dealing with it, my first step isn't to make assumptions and to tell the community what they should do. My first step is to engage with community leaders who've been doing the work and to learn the history, to learn about what has been tried and done and what has failed, and also ultimately to ensure that I'm supporting the work that they're doing most important. And so it was back in 2017 that I met Ray Tuox Watson and, and I sat down and, and I asked I asked Ray, I said, you know, what's going on? Like, well, why, why are we seeing so many organizations doing important work? Why are we seeing so many activists? Why are we seeing advocates? Why are we seeing elected officials that come from our neighborhoods? And yet all of this stuff is happening and yet we're not seeing that translate into programmatic change not to the extent that we want to see it. I've asked that question to a lot of people since then, but what I was grateful for back in 2017 is, you know, Ray didn't know me, and yet he spent some time, created some space, and he sat down, and he helped me understand. He helped me understand. So, here he comes, with the little ones. So grateful that, that you're here. And Corinne. So I should greet you all properly, right? Because we are in indigenous lands. Amen. And we have traditions and cultures that maintain to this day. Uh, so let me do that. We will send it to Paul, the Scott Squamson, New Twist, Nisu, Wushu, Wadak, Tomashi Paul, and you guys said, Come this quiet and come up. Wuni Mosquito Kakwani. Good day, friends. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Ray Tuox Watson. And these are the land of the Mashipag Mahidansi people. Welcome to our land. Good medicine and peace be unto you all. Uh, and many thanks to the brother Lewis for the opportunity to share. Um, as you mentioned, I have my little people here with me. And uh, that's really where I want to share the context of uh, my, my short remarks today. Uh, because when you go into traditional indigenous cultures, the main thing that you understand is that the most important and valuable resource that we have is our children, right? Because before all these buildings and highways and all that were here, and it was just trees and lands, the main issue we had was not what we were going to eat, not what time we had to be at work, but if this bigger tribe was going to come and take our lands from us, right? So the strength of the tribe then became in how many children we had, and how well we raised those children to grow into the next warriors, the next mothers, so that they could create more children, so that we could grow the tribe, so that we have more warriors to protect our land. So our whole entire complete focus was on seven generations from where we're at right now, based in the fact that we were a representation of the seven generations before us. And this is a concept that no matter where you go, indigenous uh, communities will share this with you. Uh, so now let's fast forward to 2021 here in the state of Rhode Island. Um, I've been heavily involved in what's been going on with the Providence public school system around the outrageous behavior, stop, the outrageous behavior that's been taking place since I was in high school, since Silas was in high school. And now my daughter is getting ready to enter the same situation that's going on, right? We look at all of the police misconduct. There was just a bunch of a videotape that went out yesterday about a situation over on the south side, and you saw the interaction between youth and police. So ultimately, what I see is that no one in our contemporary society today is thinking about anything other than themselves, right? Those weren't my kids getting harassed there, so I don't care, right? That's not my school district up there, so I don't care, right? My candidate that I voted into office as governor took care of me, so I don't care what's going on with the rest of everyone. We see right now almost a complete opposite understanding of how life is supposed to be engaged and experienced by what we see going on in our contemporary society. So then the question becomes, what do you do about that? And I agree, it's good to protest, it's good to march, it's good to let those feelings out, but after you do that, then what, right? 
And this brother right here represents what the next natural step is. To get in, to put people in positions, and to change policies and laws that we don't like and that are impacting us. CLOS made some excellent, excellent points when you talk about how colonization happened and how different communities were adopted in, right? Because the English and the French didn't get along with each other, right? And they didn't like the Irish when they got here, right? And then they didn't like the Italians when they got here, right? But then somehow, some way, these French, these English, these Irish, and these Italians transitioned to this thing called white, right? Which is different from this thing called black. And when, when you look at black, black is Cape Verdean, it's Nigerian, it's Liberian. If you're here in the Northeast, it's Narragansett, it's Pequot. So all of these things are in this black community. And as Sila said, it's not about how white you are, it's about how black you are, right? And if you're deemed to be black, whatever that means, in their minds, it's less than because you're not white. So we want to do away with all of that, right? Because I'm not into any of that color nonsense. First and foremost, I'm a Narragansett Indian. So when I'm speaking to anyone, everyone's an immigrant to these lands. And as my people and my ancestors said, everyone's welcome here. So there is no one set way of doing things in these lands unless they're mine. So anyone who comes with any norm, that's your norm. And it's respected and it's appreciated, but it's no more important or no more valuable than anyone else's norms nor should we be deciding what entire communities, how, what their opportunities, what their limitations are gonna be based upon what we think the norm of our community is going to be. And once again, that's what goes on, right? You have individuals who are groomed to be in positions like governor. They're brought up in certain school experiences. They're brought up in certain professional experiences. And then when you have someone like the good doctor here who comes from a different background, the main thing I heard the last time he ran was, oh, well, he doesn't have enough experience. And I'm saying to myself, well, isn't that a good thing? Look what's been going on. Why would we want more of the same? Why would we want more people experienced in this? And ultimately what I came to understand was the doctor doesn't come from those backgrounds that they think you're supposed to come from to be in these positions. I don't care about all of that. I care about who can do the job best, right? I care about the fact that the good brother reached out to me not only as a member of the black community, but specifically acknowledging my indigenous heritage and realizing that he can't approach everyone the same way because they're black. He has to get to know people. He has to get to understand them, to do away with this whole atmosphere of whiteness, because to me that's the real issue, right? People think they're white, and they're not. They're European immigrants to these lands, and once again, you're welcome here, but you're probably some of the newest people here. You're not certainly here as long as the African heritage people that were brought here as a part of slavery. You're not here as long as a lot of the Cape Verdean population. So how are you not coming here and placing yourself above anyone? No, 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 let's get down to the history. Let's look at where your space is actually in the society that we're all creating here, and let's move accordingly. And then thirdly, I appreciate the brother because he does what my people talk and always tell our younger people to do, go off, learn how things work, and bring it back. And that's the other issue, and that's why I'm so proud of this brother. I know so many people who grew up in this city, in this state, got fed up with it, and took off. Doing fantastic in other places. And my hat off to all of them, but my question is always, but what about back home, right? So when I saw Silas back from off of that, I was like, yo, this is fantastic. We got another one of us back home. That's what I decided to do. So when I see this brother who could be off anywhere, being super successful, saying, no, let me take up my time, my energy, my resources to do something that's important for my community, I have no choice but to honor and respect that. So to you, uh, Lewis, I want to say Katapatush, thank you very much for the leadership that you show, uh, for continuing to fight, for continuing to break the mold and force them to think expansively, not inclusively. I don't like inclusion. I don't want to be included in this nonsense you got going on. I want you to think beyond what you think is the norm to understand that what I'm bringing here is a benefit to you because whatever you've got going on here doesn't work. And that's ultimately what the point is, right? That's why elections and all that happen and people have competition, right? Because whatever's going on, people feel isn't working. I want to commend all of you here for being active and being a part of the change and the answer. Once again, a lot of times, and I do a lot of it, we get out there, we march, we protest, and all of that's good, 
but what is the goal of that? And if the goal is just to march and protest, well, congratulations, you marched and protest, but no laws changed. Right now, our biggest issue when we talk about law enforcement is the Law Enforcement Officers Bill of Rights. That's only going to get changed if the politicians who are in office feel enough pressure to change it. And as someone just mentioned, they didn't feel enough pressure this past political session, right? So Leo Board's still there. We still have issues with police. And once again, if all we end up doing is marching and protesting, then a year from now, we'll be here having the same conversation, still talking about what's wrong. So commend you all for being a part of the solution. Commend uh, Lewis here for stepping up to the plate and being a leader in this. And I'm hoping that all of us here, if you share, hear my, my words that I'm sharing with you right now, see where you fit into this picture. See where you fit into this picture. I get told a lot of times, you should run for office. No, I don't need to run for office. I need to do what I'm doing and do it well. We need to find the people that are going to run and then throw our energy and our support behind them. So I want to send a shout out to our Black Lives Matters fan. I want to send a shout out to everyone that's here right now trying to figure out how to be a part of the solution because it's going to take all of us. It's going to take us collectively, but then it's going to each take us all going back to our own communities, having the dialogues and building on the relationships that we have to get the message out that Lewis is sharing with us all that we need to change and we need to be the ones to change. So in closing, Katapatush with your Thank you for listening and peace and I hope to see you all.